Uh, so today we are going to take a look about uh, a Python library called IPyWidgets, and it's great for for us to work with uh, interactive interface or interfaces on Jupyter notebooks. And a little bit about the agenda of today. Uh, first of all, why IPyWidgets? We saw the 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 previous talk about Streamlit and why is Streamlit and not uh, IPyWidgets? We talk about that. Uh, a little bit about the 101 of using that, the library and a use case for IPyWidgets, like why using it. Uh, I'll give you uh, a real example. So, hi, uh, I'm Deborah. I live in Recife, in Brazil. It's in the coast, uh, as he said, and it's like a three hour flight from Rio or Sao Paulo. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in computer and science. I'm currently a lead data scientist at NTT Data. Uh, I'm very active, I, <laughs> we, we work thinking all the time, so I like doing things with my body, so I like Pilates, uh, roller skating, tennis. My friends joke that Pilates is, is for old people, but I like it. Uh, I also like music very much, um, especially music with groovy bass lines. I, I also play the bass, and yeah, that's it. Let's go ahead. Uh, first, why why IPyWidgets? Uh, so, if you just want to showcase your model, so your users can play with it, like we saw in the the previous talk, go with Streamlit or with Plotly Dash if you want to 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 create a dashboard. But instead, if you need a user interface to annotate data, for example, which will be our user case, or if you want to quickly prototype a, a new uh, user interface, and if you like me and you hate front-end development, then go with IPyWidgets, and we, we will sh uh, see why. Uh, first, it's easy to work with uh, for us data scientists because it's Python, so we use Python all the time. It's on Jupyter Notebook, so we don't have to think about the deployment. Uh, this is a use case mostly for internal pur purpose tools because like, we don't have a use base, we just want to share it with our team. And we also have a wide range of built-in widgets. Uh, widgets. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my Portuguese. And yeah, so uh, a little bit about the 101 of the, 101 of the, the library. Uh, so this, I don't know if everybody here, here is familiar with uh, Jupyter, but it's, it's like our, our interface, we use a web browser and we write code and we can play the cell and it runs the code. Uh, here's an example. In this is an example, I'm printing something. And if I want to change the output, I need to run the, the cell again. So this is my content. Then I change the text to, for it to change. I actually need to, actually need to run the code. And the first uh, widget we will learn is the output widget in which we can capture the capture and display the output generated by I, IPython. And so what does this mean? We can uh, create an output widget, uh, display it somewhere in the notebook, then change it somewhere in another cell, and the, the output will automatically update. So uh, here I'm, I'm importing the, the library, and then I'm creating the, the output widget, and I'm on the third cell, third cell, I'm like displaying the, the content of the output. And the cell before that, um, I'm writing, hmm, this is nice. And then on the cell uh, after that, I'm appending a text to the output and it automatically uh, displays the, the content, you see? Like in the same, in the previous cell, I'm running the code on another cell and it's uh, updating, and I can also clear everything like I did there, and it will, it will also clear. So this is the the main widget of of IPy widgets, which is the the basics. Like we, I want to change the code somewhere, but I want to update it just there, and yeah. Uh, another function, which is actually the easiest way to use IPy widgets, is the interact function which automatically creates UI controls for us based on, based on function parameters. It's beautiful. 
Uh, it's the, it is, it's, it's the easier way to use hyper widgets. Uh, so it's a decorate. I'm using it, it as a decorator. Decorator. Uh, I have a function there that uh, the the parameter it's a value from zero to ten, like a tuple. And tuple? Do you say it like that? Okay. And then you, you can display. I'm displaying the, the value. And with the with the decorator, uh, the the library actually saw that I, that uh, this was my, this was my parameter, uh, and it provides for provide us with a slider, which is beautiful. If we, we if we had a, a list, it would provide us with a drop down, and and so, and this is the easiest easiest way to use hyper widgets. Let me check the time. Okay. Um, now we will take a look at a full example. Uh, I'm now using a interactive, uh, another interactive uh, widget, which, uh, which is a toggle button. Uh, we will use the observe method of this button to, okay, I want to, to check when this changes and I want to do something. Uh, we, are, we will also use the VBox widget, which is to display content in the, in the screen. And the output widget that we talked before to, to update the, the changes. So here I have, a, do I have a pointer? Yeah. Here I have uh, the toggle button. It's like uh, the options are, uh, I, <laughs> I googled some data set and I got the Pokemon data set. And I have uh, options like flower, sea lion, or shellfish, Pokemons. And I, here I have uh, the callback function. Uh, so I'm using a, a pandas, da pandas data frame and I'm filtering by those options. And we have the, the, the toggle bot button callback and to do something when it changes, we use the observe method. Of this of the, of this widget, and we pass the the function we created, and finally we display it. Uh, I'm using the VBox widget here, which I want to display the the toggle button, toggle button, and above above that the the data data frame itself. So when I'm when I click uh, on each button, the the filter applies is applied there. And it changes. Like this is a use case of everything. Uh, most of everything that IPI widgets uh, can offer us. Offer us. But uh, to be honest, if you want to do that, go with Streamlit. It's easier. Uh, this is this is just to for us to understand what we can do it. How well, what we can do it. But it's not the the best use case. Uh, what is then the best use case? Uh, for for a, a real real world example, we we will now see a, a example of use case of our use case, uh, which was an internal tool to monitor object detection models in production. And I don't know if you guys work with uh, models in production, but it's very hard to find out of the out of the out of the box tools to to monitor uh, data drift or something like that if you work with uh, image data for tab tabular data we have some some solutions but but for image data it's something new we don't have uh, a lot of options yet and we have a, a model a, a lot of models in production and we want to f quickly figure out if an uh, object class is being predicted incorrectly. And what is the, the object detection problem sc scenario, scenario there? Uh, we have a lot of classes. It's actually, it's a um, products on shelves model, model to detect pro products on shelves. So we have a lot of classes. And we have many classes per image, uh, kind of 10 usually. And it's hard for a human to, to find mistakes if looking for the whole picture, because we have uh, a lot of classes and yeah, it's some, a lot of things going on. And what was the solution? Uh, we, okay, let's some, write something quick and dirty to, 
to we want to to check faster if there's a um, uh, a class that is being predicted incorrectly. So we get a random sample of, of production images. We crop the images so we can display only the crops of those images, not the whole the whole image. And we select each class for review, and marking the, the objects that maybe need further analysis or are, are wrong. And this way we can direct the, the, the task so it's easier, easier for uh, you, our, we humans to, to do it. So uh, as a demo, um, we cannot use the, the production data. So I got the COCO data set. Uh, 2017, random uh, validation instances. Uh, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with object detection, but this COCO is like a famous uh, object detection format. We have the images and we have metada metadata about those images, like the objects. And to, to build a tool, we, we create the crops using uh, OpenCV. Like the metadata, the metadata have the coordinates for the objects, so we can crop them. And we use basically those four widgets. Uh, this is the image widget from IPy widgets, which is for displaying images. Uh, the checkbox, which is a checkbox, uh, and the H box and the V box. They are, they are basically for uh, creating the, the interface, like the grids and, and display the content, and a button, which is a button. And, <coughs> sorry, let me get some water here. Uh, this is the demo. So, there I'm using the, the drop down widget, which we can, where we can select the classes. And it, this is a sample, for, for example, for the car class, we have a tire there, and I don't know, like maybe it's a mistake, or if this, this were really a, a production data set. Uh, so with this interface, we can quickly check the, the data and quickly uh, annotate it much faster than getting the whole image and annotating uh, like, we will, like we would do for training. And yeah. That's it, that's, a, that's an example. This will be much harder to do with extremely Tor Dash. Not harder, but less straightforward. Here we have uh, everything we, we need, like we, we use Python, we don't need to, to care about the deployment. Uh, we can display widgets and uh, format the interface like we want. And yeah, uh, this is a use case for, for API widgets. If it's, We've built at the interface, checking all of the requirements, like something quick, and that users could explore the data. Uh, we didn't need to need it to touch in HTML or CSS, which is great for us uh, data scientists. Uh, we don't have, we don't need to care about deployments. Uh, again, this is a tool for internal purpose, so we don't need to, to care about the deployment. And it was easier to do uh, than we were than if we were using Streamlit or, or Dash. And yeah, and that's it. Like IPy widgets can save us a lot of time uh, uh, with prototyping or building internal tools because usually we data scientists don't have the, the front-end knowledge. Uh, we can do this without HTML or CSS. And it's all in Jupyter, so we don't need to care about deployment. And that's it, I think that was, yeah, quick. And that's it, thank you very much. Great, I was. <laughs> so uh, everyone has to understood everything or no, none of it, but yeah. Uh, I don't have a demo. Uh, congrats for Yoshiro for writing uh, 
doing a live coding without any typo. It's really, it was really impressive. Firstly, thank you for the, thank you. For the presentation. Uh, the, the people that are using this to test the software is the QA engineers or the developers uh, use to test them? Uh, yeah, 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 good, good question. Like we have a team with a new data scientists, so they are kind of both, uh, QA and uh, developers themselves. But yeah, we have a mixed team, so we don't have a QA team specifically doing with that, working with that. Um, so everyone <laughs> uses it. How easy or difficult would it be to build, uh, to customize and extend widgets to build new widgets? Oh, it's easier. I didn't do it, but there's a, the, uh, in the documentation, mm -hmm. there's a guide for, for working with it, with, for doing that. But to do that, you need to, to work with HTML and CXS. But, oh, yeah, yeah. But they have a, they have a, a Functional, this functionality, okay. like you can, you can extend and create new widgets. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, <laughs> be gentle. First of all, thank you for your presentation. You, you mentioned earlier that you don't have um, to worry about deployments, but do you have any specific uh, best practices about this part or uh, do you, when you uh, work on something critical, do you follow something uh, specifically? Yeah, I don't have, well, for, for, for my, uh, look, I'm lucky that I don't need to work with uh, deployments. Like everything we do is, is internal, so I don't have much experience with the best practice for a deployment. I know that the, there's a, another library like Vola, and it's for you using Jupyter without the code. It's like kind of creating the interface without the, the Jupyter look. That might be a, a, a good way to, to go. But I don't, I don't, don't know anything about deployment or any other best practice. Thank you. <laughs> if you're interested in how to do a lot of Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs>